Good morning, everyone. It's 10 o'clock uh, Central European time. So let, let us start with uh, this webinar about the first open call for proof proposals of uh, Better Factory. Uh, we are going to divide this uh, session in, uh, in three, um, uh, three sessions. The first one will be uh, to explain to you uh, all the details about the, this first open call for full proposals, and especially this uh, step, the final step, which is the, the full proposal phase, uh, where you are invited to submit uh, proposals uh, jointly with um, three, uh, with consortia composed of, of three uh, categories of uh, entities that are going to be explained uh, in detail. This is going to happen from 10 to uh, 10.30. Then we will have a specific uh, session devoted to uh, the full proposal template, which is uh, uh, the main uh, document you uh, are needed to fulfill in this uh, proposal submission. And this is going to last from 10.30 until 11.00. And then we will have a uh, questions and, and, and answers sessions uh, from uh, 11 to 11.30. Uh, the first uh, topic is going to be covered by my colleague Anka Marin from Funding Box. Uh, the second one is going to be exposed to you by uh, Mr. Ali Hamad, who is the technical coordinator of, uh, of uh, the Better Factory project. And then we will have a, a joint session uh, for these questions and answers. So I give the floor to my colleague uh, Anka. Thank you, Antonio. Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Anka Marin. I'm from uh, Funding Box, presenting you. Uh, very, very glad to present to you today the Better Factory project and uh, its first uh, open call. As uh, Antonio mentioned, we would first go through the general details regarding this uh, open call. So for those of you who haven't uh, heard about us yet, uh, let me just briefly introduce to you the Better Factory project. This is an EU initiative to help European manufacturing companies to enter new markets through the collaboration with artists and tech suppliers. More precisely, through this project, manufacturing companies will be assisted by the, by the Better Factory Consortium to help uh, with the production cost reduction, with the product redesign, and financial and business, and we also provide financial and business consultancies. consultancy. Manufacturing companies through this project will be given access to RAMP, which is a, a robotic automation marketplace, a business-to-business -business, uh, internet marketplace for all uh, for all registered uh, companies to sell and buy their products. As uh, as mentioned, Ramp Robotics and uh, Automation Marketplace will enable manufacturing companies to buy technology and services, while technology suppliers, financial consultants, or uh, artists can sell their technology and services to uh, manufacturing companies. All this will be done through RAMP for those companies, for those um, applicants who will be able to join the, uh, the project after the selection process. So, first of all, we are going to talk about the challenges that the project intends to address. And uh, first, we have the creativity challenge, which is uh, the challenge that we would like to address in order to make the manufacturing companies the companies stay more competitive on the global market this can be only be done through reinventing their products and the customization of their line of uh, line of products moreover the adoption of uh, new business models and investment into technologies for new and or maybe personalized products should be done around the core value proposition of the product and around the core knowledge of the company. 
Another challenge that we intend to address through this project is the Lean Agile Challenge. More precisely, we are intending to assist manufacturing companies to produce batches of new and personalized products alongside existing uh, products, of course, that uh, uh, will help the factories to start operating as, connecting, as connected lean, agile, cyber, physical systems. And this also will translate into minimizing the use of resources while keeping the constraints on quality, delivery, and time. Furthermore, some other uh, challenges that we know manufacturing companies may come to, uh, may come to face during their uh, uh, lifetime are the investment challenges. And this is where we come with the innovative idea of uh, art involved with science and uh, the combination of these two can drive to innovation. So artist contribution can spur new innovations on the path to digital transformation and technology suppliers, they have a very important role as they can help explore new horizons with technologies. So full exploitation of these unpredictable innovations will rely on the access to finance. And lastly, but not least, the skills challenges is another challenge that we, we want to address, we intend to address the, through the project. And this means that the transformation process of a conventional factory usually requires transformation of organizational design and enterprise ar architecture. And this means embracing convergence of multiple advanced technologies. This is where we step up and we provide strategic thinking, simulation planning and reskilling and this can be done through trainings for plan manager or operators on lean agile production, which will be available on the ramp for the marketplace I uh, mentioned earlier. Now let's see who can uh, who can join the Better Factory project. We are going to talk about the individual members of the consortia. Sorry about that. Of the consortia, and uh, these uh, have to be manufacturing companies and we, when we are talking about manufacturing companies we are talking about companies which can be legally constituted as, as SMEs small and medium enterprises slightly bigger companies and mid caps the in the guide for applicants which you can find available on the uh, microsite of the project you will find uh, more details about on the definition of these uh, three categories however generally speaking a small or medium enterprise is the company that has a hand count a uh, head count sorry uh, smaller than 250 and the turnover is less than 50 million euros when it comes to slightly bigger companies, the definition that we have from the European Union is a headcount of less than 500 people and the turnover less than, uh, less than 100 million euros. While the mid-cap is considered a company which is neither an SME nor a slightly bigger company and has a headcount of less than 3,000 people. So these manufacturing companies who are, which are looking to redesign their current products and services with product design artists and automation technology suppliers are the ones that we are considering for the Better Factory First Open Call. This collaboration with artists and technology supplier would enable the manufacturing company to optimize their production cost. The next uh, uh, type of uh, applicant that should be considered for the consortium is the artist. And this is where we are looking for artists willing to collaborate with the manufacturing companies and the technology suppliers in order to help them redesign and co-create new products and services. The third uh, member of the consortium would be the technology supplier. And this has to be a technology supplier interested to use advanced robotics and technologies for lean agile production in collaboration with both manufacturing companies and the artists. So as mentioned before, this collaboration between manufacturing companies, artists and tech suppliers can take many forms and deliver a wide variety of outcomes. This is totally up to the 
to the imagination and the collaboration between the three members. However, at a technical level, the focus of the project will be to minimize the impact on production cost and to create more value. And this can be done by reducing waste, energy, and other production resources, by optimizing factory logistics, by using robots to support workers, and by the production pre-planning and simulation. At the same time, uh, besides the technical level that we are looking at, we are also considering, as, uh, we are also prioritizing, better said, the sectoral levels like plastic and rubber, furniture and wood, food and agriculture, construction, metal and machinery, textile and leather. And now the interesting part for, uh, for uh, potential applicants is what we are going to offer. And this is the knowledge transfer program that Better Factory Project is offering to uh, applicants, which are going to apply as a consortium made of one manufacturing company, one artist, and one technology supplier. This is very important. This is the only formula eligible for the uh, Better Factory open call. And we are launching two open calls through which we are going to select eight consortia, eight knowledge transfer uh, experiments in each of the two open calls of, uh, made of uh, teams willing to design new product lines and deploy automation solutions in the factory. So the, the selected KTA, KTEs, that selected consortia, will receive up to, to 200,000 euros equity-free funding. They will get the opportunity to explore new markets using digital technologies. They will also have the chance to, to test and develop a new lean agile production technologies with RAM and access training to reskill their staff. Moreover, through Better, Pro Better Factory Project, the um, selected consortia will get business support and mentoring. This is where we are right now. We are at, in the first open call for full proposals from consortia and the knowledge transfer experiments that will be selected will have to go through, this, uh, through the stages that are shown here on this slide. So we have initiated the first open call for full proposals in the Better Factory project on the, on the 1st of May. And this is going to be uh, to have a deadline on the 15th of July at 5, uh, 5 o'clock p.m. Central European time. So at this stage, consortia, consortium made of one manufacturing company, one artist and one technology supplier can present their full proposal, can submit their full proposal up to the deadline on the 15th, uh, 15th of uh, July. And the first, they will go through a selection phase and uh, evaluation phase, and the selected KTEs will be able to, to start the experiment and to start the program in uh, October 2021 and go through the execution phase, which is, uh, which is uh, going to last 16 months. So in this open call, we'll be selecting eight consortia composed of the three members uh, mentioned uh, uh, before, and they will be uh, participating in the 16-month knowledge transfer program. During this entire period, the knowledge transfer experiments will be supported by better factory partners to design new product lines and deploy automation solutions in the factory. The selection process will go as follows. The all submitted applications during the submission period, that is up to 15th of July 2021 at 5 o'clock, will go through the eligibility check, which is going to be done by the uh, by funding box, which is the project, uh, uh, which is a partner in the project, based on the eligibility criteria that you can find uh, very well defined in the guide for applicants. The those proposals who, which have passed the eligibility check will go through the internal and external evaluation. This means that we'll have an experts pool, an experts panel of um, 
of external and internal independent evaluators who are going to evaluate each of the each one of the proposals that have passed the eligibility check. Each proposal will be evaluated by two independent experts. And those which have passed the threshold, the, the scoring that you will find uh, more detailed in the guide for applicants, will be going to the consensus meeting where the selection committee, which is made up of board partners of Better Factory uh, project and other two Better Factory experts, will decide on the finalists. 16 finalists, more exactly, will be those who, who are going to the jury day which is made up of the core partners. And after this jury day, eight selected uh, consortia, eight selected KTIs, KTEs will go further on in the um, knowledge transfer program. At each stage of this uh, selection process, all applicants will be notified about the results of their, uh, of their proposal and will receive feedback from the experts and uh, other um, other partners involved in the selection process. We expect this process to start just uh, immediately after the submission deadline and to go on between three and four weeks uh, for the external uh, evaluation and then we'll, by the end of uh, September to have uh, the number of uh, finalists and uh, beginning of, of October for the selected uh, uh, KTAs to go to the program. Sorry. How will we do it? So the execution of the knowledge transfer experiment, as, uh, as mentioned before, is a collaboration between the manufacturing company, the tech supplier and the artist, assisted at all the stages by the art mentor, business mentor and the technology mentor. There will be a tech transfer and art transfer between the three, uh, three members of the consortia and this will uh, enable them to, to implement the proposal that has been chosen to go through the, prog through the program. So the 16 chosen experiments are aimed to transform manufacturing companies into lean agile factories with manufacturing and delivery of new or personalized products and services as their business strategy. Other things that we will be uh, doing in order to, to assist the KTEs in the program will be to provide the technical mentoring which will guide, uh, will guide the KTIs, do, providing expertise for resolving technical, uh, technical issues and ensure the solution is beyond the current state of art of the factory. So the technical mentors will make sure that the factory, after passing through the program and during the program, will uh, have better results than uh, they have uh, initially started with. The art mentors will provide crucial support in guiding artists to develop creative solutions like design, and this will provide real value in addressing the challenges presented by the manufacturing companies. At the same time, the business mentor will support in developing a business plan for the further exploitation of the results beyond the program, and this will ensure long-term sustainability for the, for the participants. The business support will focus on ensuring the differentiation and value proposition of the achievements. And at, lastly, but uh, not less important, Better Factory will provide two cutting edge tools developed and tested during the lifetime of the project. As previously mentioned, RAMP, the robotics and automation marketplace, will be the one stop shop where manufacturing companies will be able to buy services from technology suppliers, artists, competence centers, training providers, and financial brokers, while apps, the advanced production planning and scheduling, will enable, which is deployed on a free and open uh, IoT platform, will enable the reduction of cost by 10% in 50% less time. Apps will automatically reconfigure the collaborative robots. So these are the, uh, the components that we intend to employ during the lifetime of the program in order to assist the selected consortia to uh, implement their 
strategy, their proposal, and to obtain the results and the objectives they, uh, they have initially presented in the full proposal. When it comes to the eligibility criteria, just to briefly go through the, uh, the details that you will find also in the guide for applicants or in frequently asked questions, as mentioned, and this is uh, of highest importance, so please be uh, very aware of this, the proposals can be submitted only by a consortium, which has to be composed of the following profiles, one manufacturing company, one artist, one technology supplier. One of each, not two of, two of one of the profiles, not any other combination. Just one of each to form the consortia. All members have to be established in an eligible EU country, which is EU members, uh, Horizon 2020 associated countries, and the United Kingdom. For uh, more details about the EU members and the associated countries, you will find uh, information in the guide for applicants. When it comes to the manufacturing companies and tech suppliers, this can be legally constituted as SME, mid-cap, or slightly bigger companies with the definitions that uh, we have in the guide and the short description I made earlier. While the artist member of the consortium can be either one of these types, uh, an SME and mid-cap or slightly bigger company, but also can be a self-employed individual. I don't know if Rodolfo is here to, to give us a bit more context on these two examples. If he's not here, I will try to, to help you with uh, some details on the examples that we were provided from our um, partner from InfoArt. So uh, we have a couple of examples to make you, to help you make an idea about the projects that we'd like uh, to see in the full proposals. Uh, please be aware that we have some uh, further details in the guide for applicants on each uh, sector and you can see there some, uh, some detailed description of the, some uh, ideal or example projects we are considering. So right now we are looking at an example of a digital design and manufacturing, which is furniture and wood. And this is a concept in which uh, the models are first made by hand and then used to make molds, which in turn are then used to produce larger quantities. So this gives the possibility of making pro products in a larger series, yet retaining a unique character. So this is a um, concept, a project, a possible project that the uh, Better Factory could consider in this open code. Another example is uh, of digital design and manufacturing this time. And this has uh, basically the same uh, recipe. It, uh, it has uh, a specific design. It has an individual um, character, but then it, through, the, through technology, it, it has the possibility, the, the factory has the possibility to produce larger series, retaining the, the unique character of the design. And the digital component has a very important uh, part in this, uh, in this process as well. <clears throat> we have another example here, this digital design and manufacturing. This time is with metal and machinery. As, uh, as I mentioned before, the sectors uh, which we prioritize in the Better Factory project are, um, are, in, this, uh, are in line with the, the examples that uh, have just been provided. So this is where um, metal and machine brief meet digital design and um, help to help to create uh, personalized products also with a unique character but mass production enabled mass production uh, as uh, antonio mentioned earlier and uh, as i also said during the presentation the submission which has the deadline on uh, 15th of july is sent through the microsite of, um, of the project and you will have to fill in the information in the online form and also the full proposal template which is a document you can find on the website and uh, the full proposal template will be further detailed by um, by our uh, technical partner Ali Muhammad who, uh, who will uh, be presenting after me but just in uh, general lines the full proposal 
is an online form where you will have to fill in the details for each of the three members of the consortium. And the full proposal document is a template. You will find it in Word. You can work offline on it just, uh, just to, to coordinate work between the three members. But then it has to be uploaded on the same platform and it has to be submitted. Together, the online form and the full proposal document attached to this online form will constitute the full proposal that will be, uh, will be going through the selection and evaluation process mentioned earlier, as long as it is submitted before the official deadline of the call. As, uh, as I said before, you, uh, the applications have to, the proposals will have to be submitted through the Better Factory microsite. Uh, this is the, email, the, the website address where you'll find the, the call. By clicking on the Apply Now button, you'll go to the application form where all details regarding the consortia and um, other questions regarding uh, the project will have to be filled in together with the um, full proposal document, which has to be uploaded as a separate document. For any questions, and before starting uh, filling in the application for the full proposal, we highly recommend that you go to our, uh, uh, to our microsite, where you will find the guides and documents page, and there you will find information regarding eligibility, regarding uh, scoring, regarding uh, potential examples of uh, projects that we are looking for in this, uh, in this open call. At the same time, in case you have any technical questions or doubts or any trouble of any kind during the submission process, you can contact us. You can contact us through the um, official Better, Better Factory help desk, which is available at Spaces. We have a community there. You'll have uh, you'll find plenty of questions from um, from other uh, potential applicants like yourselves, and you may find answers to your questions that have uh, to questions that have already been answered. Or you can just uh, send us your doubts, your questions, and we'll. Um, Send, your, send our reply in the shortest time uh, possible. Other than that, please remember the deadline. Please remember to check the guides and documents because uh, the information that you require in order to understand the project and to complete the full proposal is uh, available in the guides and documents, in the frequently asked questions, in the guide for applicants. And uh, the template of the full proposal will give you a very clear idea of uh, what you need to consider when constituting the, uh, the consortia and when uh, filling in the application form. I will, uh, since we've been talking about the full proposal template and uh, this are, these are the general ideas, general uh, information regarding this first open call in Better Factory. I will uh, pass, um, I will give the floor to Ali to walk you through the full proposal template, which needs to be uh, completely filled in by you before submitting the, the entire application. We'll be taking questions after uh, Ali's uh, presentation of the full proposal template. So thank you very much all for your attention. Uh, Ali, I will have to uh, give you presenter rights in order to, to, to be able to present the full proposal. Can you hear us? Ali, it, it seems uh, your the sound is very low. Is it better now? Yeah, much better. Okay, just to... Uh... Uh, monitor. Let me know when you can see it. Yes, it's okay now. We can see the you can okay. we can see your screen and the proposal. Thank yes. you, Ali. So hello everyone. I uh, you got the introduction from the uh, from Anka about. Uh, 
about what is the whole program about but at the end of the day i think all what you have to what you would be doing would be in this document and this document is the one what you write and it will become part of your grant uh, of your sub grant agreement basically contract with us so i think it is good to know how to do this document this will be the basis for your the evaluation and selection so just very quick i think this is the the template you can access from the application website uh, for the better factory so there is some parts of it are in green highlighted as you can see and those are the instructions so basically you should read those instructions and it says that okay what kind of font size and things like you should follow and after doing uh, following these instructions basically you can delete these they they don't need to be there anymore in the in the final proposal uh, then you see that there are some parts which are yellow highlighted which are under yellow highlight and those are the things which you should add which you should you with this is the text where which you can add it so for example acronym in the title of the proposal you should actually uh, modify you should describe what is the title of your proposal the name of the company address and so on so these are the things you should and of course you can then you should remove the yellow highlights after adding this data in there uh, anka mentioned that you are required uh, that there is one sme one artist and one technology supplier this is uh, the combination of what we are looking for in uh, extra if you can really really justify it may be that you can have more than one technology supplier but that's going to be very uh, that the reason should be for that that uh, there, there is a necessity to achieve this uh, this idea what you are presenting um then this is then there are parts in the proposal like this one which are not uh, highlighted at all and these are the parts which you should not change anyway this is the table of content so the number of pages uh, that the page numbers will be updated here other than that everything remains how it is now um, you should write a small executive summary maybe half a page that what is exactly your proposal about is more like an abstract but here comes the excellence so your proposal uh, will be evaluated on three criteria one uh, actually basically on two criteria uh, one of them is the excellence and the excellence is you describe that what is the team you have basically we are very interested to know that the people who will be working on this task and do they have the capacity to achieve these things so we do not want lots of project managers from your side just coming uh, with us that we have lots of project management experience because if the, the funding is uh, small we are doing most of the project management and administrative tasks what we would like from your side is to lots of uh, developer lots of people who can actually do hand who can do hands-on things and uh, they they are experienced with software they are experienced with robotics they are uh, experienced with system integration so this is what we really are looking for uh, project managers are really not needed because uh, they we, we are doing the project management and coordination uh, maybe one person from your side who would be the point of contact maybe the, that that can be one person but that's very very minimalistic task that doesn't need to be even described in the team necessarily in the team then comes the project description uh, project description is uh, like you described in the yellow that what is your project is about again there is some text in the green in the concept and innovativeness so you should delete that text because those are the instructions but this instructions as you can see that there are four different areas what we are addressing as technology uh, uh, part and uh, those are uh, collaborative robots working with humans we are our you are working with mobile robots for, for the logistics automation or you're working with material water energy optimization like let's say like resource optimization or you're looking to do production planning or simulation but 
So these are the four technologies we offer. We expect that during your uh, experiment, you will at least try to address two of them and try to implement two of them in your factory. And uh, basically, if you are looking for some 3D printing, if you are looking for additive manufacturing or some other sort of other technology, uh, may, maybe welding automation, uh, this is not beyond our scope. So this is not something what better factory is supporting. In the same way, you should also describe about your product and how you plan to do the improvement in your product and do the customization. What are the possibilities? The second criteria what, for what your proposal will be evaluated is the impact. What we really want to know that after what you, what is the business potential? So how this new product and the new automation. So automation should bring the cost down for the production and allow you to be more productive. At the same time, so it means that you should be able to access more markets. And also if your product is improving, your product is changing. So you should have some market for that. So you describe that what is the business potential for this new. Then there is go to market strategy. So what are you going to, what is steps you plan and what are you going to do to reach that market? So that's the more important part because we are providing the money. This is more like a seed money for you to try different things and basically get some good answers for yourself. Uh, what we are very interested from your side is to know that how you are going to make further investment in the future to really implement these things and access this market. Uh, this is very, very important for us that we are not looking to give this money. Uh, I, this has to have a real business uh, plan from your side. Uh, then we are also looking for, so as you know, that uh, we are in 20, uh, uh, in the 20th, 21st century. So we are actually looking somehow that we make less and less impact on the, on the environment. And this is one of the big goals. So by optimizing your production, by optimizing your products, you should be able to so show that, okay, we are going to have a social and environmental impact also. Again, there is uh, the third part of the proposal is implementation plan. And here actually, you can see that there is almost no yellow highlighted. So the green text, you can see the green which says that this is okay. No changes shall be made to the task, schedule, deliverables, or any of these things. So basically, this, this you can delete this paragraph after reading the green one. And the yellow ones basically are the names of the parts. <laughs> but you can see that the rest of the plan, implementation plan, all the deliverables, all the tasks, all the objectives, everything, the schedule when something needs to be completed is already described in here so nothing needs to be changed here and you will not be judged on this uh on, on this because this is fixed for every partner now uh, this is the only part you have to see if there is something we, you need to do but that will come after the evaluation from our side so this is the uh, proposal. Uh, I, if you have any questions, if you have any doubts, please ask. I highly recommend that you go ahead and read this template and ask the questions and clarify everything. All right, I'm done. Thank you, Ali, for these nice uh, comments and and explanations. Um, yeah, let, let's start a, a session of uh, questions and answers uh, from both uh, presentations. If you have any doubts on on the full proposal template, how uh, to fulfill it, or of any other other kind regarding the this uh, first uh, uh, open call, please. This is your turn now. You can uh, include your uh, questions uh, in the chat. Or Anka, I don't know if you 
we are able to enable. Yes, uh, I can see if if someone raises their hand, we can um, we can take their questions live or in the chat. We don't have anything so far. So by raise the hand or include uh, make your question in the chat. I just like to uh, clarify that th this uh, webinar is being recorded. So any one of you can uh, will have a um, a copy of of this recording uh, after the this session is ended. And uh, also just to clarify that uh, it's important that uh, to note that you know uh, all the potential applicants have to be from the eligible countries that uh, Anka was mentioning in. The, her presentation. So any of the European Union members, uh, including in this case the United Kingdom plus the H 2020 uh, associated countries. Do you have in the guide for applicants uh, description of all these countries? But uh, basically, uh, it contains most of uh, the countries of Europe uh, that are not in the European Union plus some other countries uh, from Africa and, and other continents. Okay, Antonio, looks like we have Balash uh, raised his hand. His hand, sorry. Uh, your mic is on now, Balash, if you want to make the question, make your question. Hi, uh, this is a question for Ali on the uh, proposal template. Uh, in the third part, which he showed the implementation, he said nothing has to be changed. So, can he spend some more uh, time on that? Because do we have to uh, uh, write our detailed implementation steps in that section? Or because, uh, as he said, nothing has to be changed, it was a little bit confusing. I yeah, thank you, Balash. I can share this one more time. Yes, you can. Yes. So you see it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we can actually go through this task. So, what would you be required to do? So, the one of the very first tasks is to prepare. Uh, so when you join us, one of the very first thing we are going to do is to make like an individual mentoring plan. So that means that we are going to allocate certain members from our side, the business, technology and art mentors from our side to you. So of course you're coming with a technology supplier, you're coming with the artist. But then we also, uh, because you are going to use uh, the, the things what we are providing. So we are going to allocate some mentor and this is called individual mentoring plan. This would be this proposal plus some additional uh, things. So the name of the mentors and what is agreed with the mentors, what should they, so, so that would be added in here at that time. And uh, that then become part of the, your contract. Then the other thing is uh, that we, you know that you or many of you have already been dealing with the ramp so that's not the end of the story basically now you were making the trying to or making some sort of initial contacts and contracts some people have actually managed to even make contract on the on the ramp they, they, they took initiatives on their own uh, but basically now we will make sure that you are com your company is registered on the ramp. The people who you have described going to be working on this experiment are now added into the ramp. You have certain administrators, you have certain employees and people who will be doing the work on this. So that would be another task, set up the project on the marketplace. Then we will ask you to make a deliverable, which is called the requirements of the project. So this, where you will define that what your requirements are about. We have actually mentioned the description of the machine. We will give actually that uh, you the template so you can actually fill it out. 
Um, basically, we would like to know that uh, the, 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 we will give you the IoT platform. You, you will have the IoT platform from our side, and you will actually define that what are the machines, what are the equipment, what are the people, what are the robots, what are the things inside the factory which you would like would you would be connecting to the to this IoT platform. And uh, members, then you we will be asking a short survey from you to get a feedback that what you did these three tasks, what was the things went well, what went wrong, what could have been better on the marketplace or in general. So this is uh, one other task. Everyone will be required to provide this feedback. Uh, the second task would be then the uh, portfolio innovation. So here, <clears throat> uh, basically, we will uh, uh, the artist and the SME will be working together uh, with the um, with the end user and with the mentor provided by us, and uh, they are their job is already defined here that actually they will be first analyzing what the company in, uh, current portfolio is what is possible and then iteratively generating some credible outputs this is again also going to be happening on the ramp marketplace uh, basically there will be a place where SME and artists can exchange ideas show designs to each other exchange their products uh, data and all, all the materials, so they will be doing this task there to get a big product. And these will be their deliverables. And we will provide you the templates for these deliverables. Uh, then, as you saw in the uh, excellence chapter, you were required that at least you will deploy two different uh, automation technologies, what we are providing. So that you will be doing in this task. Basically, you have defined in, in the task one, uh, task one in deliverable 1.2, you have defined the requirements, you have defined the equipment which will need to be connected to this IoT platform to get the data on the marketplace and then develop the service related to human robot collaboration or logistics automation. So we will require you to then start doing this uh, task, connect those uh, data sensors and those machines to the IoT platform. Data will become the market uh, will become available on the marketplace. There will be certain graphs will be set up. So basically, we will help you, or you can actually by yourself set up a, some certain dashboards for the company, and uh, also uh, build the 3D factory model of the factory. Uh, basically, this would be the initial task because in the rest of the project, you, the technology supplier and the SME, they will be doing the experiment on the marketplace. So the, all the graphs, all the data, all the 3D model of the factory would be the central point of the development work for the technology supplier. They will be able to know what's going on in the factory. They will be able to see what's going on in the factory. They will be able to then uh, deploy their technology and show it to the end user that okay what uh, their solution will do in the factory so this is uh, we, we will provide you the basic components and then you will maybe implement something of your own using these components and basically show that okay how this task went and again at the end of each task you will see that there is a requirement that we will ask you to provide the feedback that what happened, what went good, what went wrong. Uh, so Ali, yes. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, so are you saying this part is after a successful consortia is selected and they get the money or is it before right now? Because uh, no, not now. It is after the consortia is selected once we, because for this, you can see that this is quite a heavy work. So we will pay for this. <laughs> okay. So, so now before July 15, we will not do anything here, right? No, no, you don't do anything in here. You don't modify anything except the name, put your names, the right names of the companies. Okay. Okay. So now it's clear. So it means before July 15, only the section one and two is what we. Uh, uh, yes. 
and the, all exactly. the, all this entire section three implementation, everything in black would be as it is. We just uh, as it is, and you, you this is to give you an impression that what they, I think it's good for you to know what you will be doing. This will help you to write the first two sections because this is fixed. Okay. So this okay. will help you to write the first two section, but you don't modify and do anything about this section at all. Okay. So in the first two sections, you are nowhere asking a detailed, uh, uh, you know, like a, a detailed plan of implementation, like how much time? Uh, no, no, because the time is fixed. The the every uh, the the technologies we provide are fixed. So everything is given for you. Uh, this is really like a very uh, how how should I say this is a very very fast agile process it's like you you enter into a program where everything is defined and you follow that path towards the success we do not want uh, you to spend lots of time in planning and everything and there is also a danger that if everybody is just following their own plan uh, we will not be able to provide the support on all kind of plans so this is a very defined plan. I think you know this kind of plans which uh, runs for the startup companies or acceleration programs, where you enter there is a defined plan and a schedule. You enter there and you follow that schedule. And basically, after, uh, this is how we want it to be. And uh, I also don't see, you know, in as a as a technology supplier, we work on uh, with various customers. Uh, you know the. Typically in the industry, there is something called a statement of work where the core of the proposal is about which uh, resources, like which uh, engineers work for how long. So we try to capture uh, so maybe man hours or man months, and then that translates into cost. So you are nowhere asking for you know, such things? No, we are not asking for you to report the cost also. We only need to know that the best of the best people will be working from your side or the people who knows these things, they are working on this side. We will give, uh, you get the money what has been promised to you. If you're a technology supplier, you get 100,000. If you're an SME, you get 50,000. If you're an artist, you get 50,000. We give you that and we do not ask you that what did you do with that money? Who, who whose salaries got paid? Did you buy a robot or did you buy a television or a car or or just took a big vacation uh, somewhere? We don't really care. Uh, we only want these things to be done and deliver and you get the money. No questions asked from us. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, so maybe the last question uh, in this thread. Uh, uh, as a, again, uh, as a core component of the proposal, it's about the labor and the, uh, and in the materials. So you answered, okay, no need to mention any number of hours or uh, etc. As we do, as we do typically. Then how about uh, the materials uh, procured? It could be, you know, some uh, hardware components, or it could be. Yes, some, uh, yes, you can buy whatever you like. No, but uh, do we have to mention before July 15 somewhere what is required? I think it would be it would be good because this is a very useful process for you to think that what I would need. So this would show us that you are really seriously thinking what components I would need to buy. What are so you are seriously thinking about it? But it is not. Uh, we wouldn't ask you that what components did you buy. But of course, if you will. Uh, you will tell us that hey i need this component so of course then we will ask that why are you why haven't you bought them yet or why don't you buy them because we wouldn't like to have any delays in the schedule you have to follow okay this is really critical i think there is the evaluation criteria if you are getting continuously delayed in the deliver deliver we can actually stop uh, the experiment <laughs> Okay, uh, so maybe I'm sorry, one last question. Uh, so your money that we get uh, for our internal accounting purposes, uh, say if we have a project, uh, say uh, if we are interested in this, we, we may end up spending more than the 100K you provide as a technology supplier, but 
since we are interested and we want to grow we might spend uh, you know some more money from our side so your 100k is kind of a tax free money how is it is it uh, an income can you make any comment on that uh anton your uncle i think you can answer that question better yes um maybe uh, i'd like to to spend some minutes explaining this more in detail because i think in the in the first presentation we didn't do it i don't know Anka, if you can <clears throat> uh, give me access to to my uh, screen so i can share my screen okay this is the what i'm showing here is, is the guide for applicants which is uh, actually the main document that will recommend highly recommend all of you to to read very carefully before um, uh, starting the, uh, the the proposal uh, drafting and as uh, Alil has uh, explained in detail uh, the all the the implementation tasks uh, has a meaning uh, why we are uh, explaining that in this uh full proposal template although you don't have to uh, do anything now it's just for you to understand that in short we are not going to uh, pay you against any cost justification or whatever but against uh, the work you are delivering so against the deliverables and this is a, a, a very clear schedule on how much each consortium will get after reaching or uh, uh, approving every single milestone. Uh, the first thing is when you go to the jury day, you are going to receive a mini grant of 1,800 uh, 1, um, uh, euros. And if you then succeeded to uh, enter into the KTE program, you are going to follow these three stages uh, of uh, 16 months in total and in each state you will have to uh, meet all these uh, deliverables that have been explained by Ali. So the, uh, in total you will receive 200,000 euros and again 100,000 for the technology supplier and 50,000 for the artist and the KTs. This is a uh, a grant in the form of grant so when you receive the money first of all there, there won't be the need of uh, issuing any invoice from your side it's just a request for payment that uh, you make to the to the consortium and you will get paid once you get the approval of your deliverables for example <clears throat> the first installment after the jury day, uh, the first installment will be done after stage one has ended. And then you will have to uh, submit these two deliverables in the individual mentoring plan, which is a, a very, very important one because it's, it's a, 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 a part of the contract. So you will have to sign the contract, including this individual mentoring plan as an annex. And this is done at the beginning, the very beginning of the, of the project, uh, with the help, of course, of the mentors you are going to get. And, but uh, also these requirements for a RAMP IoT platform. So you will receive in one installment this amount of uh, divided in, in, uh, in uh, proportionally to uh, each, each member of the consortium but uh, you need the approval from the um, the mentoring committee of these uh, deliverables once they have been approved you immediately receive the money okay probably we are not sure of that yet we are going to ask for a request for payment or something like that but this is just a receipt it's not an invoice so in terms of accounting internal accounting the the money you are going to get is the form of grant and you know perfectly that a, a grant is an income is an income you receive in your company but you only need to declare 
each year what uh, the the amount of this grant of the grant that you have really spent so even though we are not going to ask you for any cost justification it is clear that you as uh, as a company internally you have to do your own uh, internal accounting and you need to of course uh if you receive that let's say uh, 5,000 euros, for example, you need, of course, to justify for your own uh, country uh, tax authority how these 5,000 euros have, has, have been spent. But it doesn't have any VAT whatsoever. There is no invoice. If you are familiar with accounting, you will uh, note that a grant is not considered as a typical uh, income with a uh, an invoice or whatsoever. I don't know if uh, this is more clear now. Yeah, it is clear. Uh, is this a de minimis grant? Sorry? I mean, the grant uh, uh, actually, you know, this grant that you provide, is it categorized as de minimis? De, you know, de no, minimis? no, 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 it's, it's a typical grant. No. Okay. No, there is no, no de minimis uh, rule here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Antonio, uh, it looks like we have another question from Katrinel. Thank you, Balas, for your intervention. Uh, Katrinel, your, uh, you can turn on your mic now and ask your question. I can see you have your hand raised. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Hello, hi, thanks for the presentation and everything. I had a question about the proposal. I mean, how much are we supposed to be focused? For example, say we wanna develop a new uh, series of, product, of products. How much are we supposed to be focusing on the product itself in the proposal and how much are we supposed to be focusing on the uh, technique of, um, let's say, you know, implementing a new technique of uh, developing products? And the second question is, uh, where can we find uh, what what we have seen before, what we're supposed to fill in? If we can find it already now online, or if it's just going to be, uh, if we're going to get it later? Thanks. I think maybe, uh, Ali, you, you can answer the first question. Uh, I don't know if Ali is still with us, uh, Antonio. Uh, is that no, Antonio, Ali is not with us. Okay, uh, maybe then Anka, why don't you uh, answer the second one, the second question? Okay, so uh, Katrina, yes, as I mentioned in the presentation, you can find uh, you can find the template of the full proposal on the. Um, on the website of the call, of the open call, you have the template in uh, Word format, so you can work together with the other members of the um, of the consortia, of the consortium, in order to elaborate the full proposal. So you will find it uh, on the microsite in the sections and guides and in the section guides and documents. You have uh, the full proposal template. You can download it and uh, start working on it. But please remember the whole process, the whole application, the proposal has to go through the microsite on the online application form at the Better Factory FundingBox.com. Apply now, you start the application process, and when it's finished, you upload the full proposal document that you are already provided with. Okay, can, can you uh, repeat the, the first question, please? Yes, right. Uh, so the first question was about uh, how much are we supposed to be focused? For example, we want to develop a new product. How much are we supposed to be uh, focusing in the proposal on the product and how much on the technique of manufacturing uh, itself? Or, or if we can focus on the product or if we're supposed to focus on a more general sort of a new way of uh, delivering mm. products. That was kind of... You mean during the execution, of course. Uh, I think uh, uh, yeah, yeah. it has been explained in the full proposal template the, the different uh, steps you need to follow, no? So 
there, you will know that there is a, 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 a very strong technical component that you need to follow and, and a, a development that you need to do. And, and specific, specifically, uh, we are going to pay uh, attention to the, 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 the outcome of this collaboration between the three partners. You know? There are some parts that uh, need to be done by the technology supplier and the manufacturing SME, or uh, and other parts from the, the manufacturing SME and, uh, and, and the artist. The core, the core of, of the program is the manufacturing SME. I think this is understood. Uh, that's the main uh, purpose of, uh, of this project is to help the, uh, the, 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 the SME. What I, what I mean SME, I'm, I'm meaning SMEs and mid caps, et cetera. Okay, but just to simplify. Any company, uh, the, the real objective of, uh, of any of these uh, uh, H2020 projects is to help the uh, ecosystem of, of uh, manufacturing uh, companies uh, throughout Europe. And uh, there are different projects helping these manufacturing companies in different ways. In Better Factory, we are introducing the uh, concept of these artists, which is a novelty, uh, where the manufacturing SME is, or a company is not only in contact with the technology supplier that is going to provide the technology that uh, this manufacturing company needs to uh, uh, implement uh, new, basically new products, of course, new products, but it can be also products and services, the improvement of services. Uh, but here we are introducing the, the concept of these artists that can allow, uh, thanks to the creativity that uh, an artist can provide, you know, be very effective in the way, or, or especially in the impact that this uh, new product or this improved enhanced product uh, from the manufacturing company can uh, can get. You know, so the 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 whole uh, uh, KTE uh, program uh, is uh, you know needs, needs all of that into account and it's all balanced. So there, there is no, uh, not a part which is uh, more important than the other one, you know. In the end, uh, the idea is that you take uh, manufacturing SME that today, nowadays, is, uh, is producing uh, uh, its, its products and services in a way that uh, it doesn't use any uh, technology or it doesn't use uh, efficient technologies that allow them to uh, reduce uh, the production costs, to reduce the time in uh, the time to market, etc. And uh, thanks to this program, these manufacturing SMEs that probably they are working in a traditional way, they're going to get the, the, the means to improve that not only the quality and, uh, and this uh, reduction costs, et cetera, but also have uh, a, a wider business, uh, a wider impact uh, in, in different uh, parts of Europe, thanks to uh, you know, a, a kind of added value that comes from, from this, art, this artist that is going to uh, you know, uh, make this product more attractive for for a given market, etc. So um, I don't know if, uh, but in any case, in the full proposal template, you have uh, all the details on every single step to be done by each partner of the of the of the consortium, and you will see that there are some some activities, some tasks that are only uh, done by, by two of the partners and other activities for the other two and, and some of them uh, need to be done by the three of them. But what we really would like is to get uh, an outcome, a result that is beneficial 
is beneficial for all the parties, but especially for the manufacturers. So, uh, Katrina, if uh, that answered your question, do you want to add anything else? Can we move to another question? No, that pretty much answered my question. Thanks. Okay, thank you for your intervention. We have another question from Gavard. Yes, hello. Turn on thank your you. mic. Okay, hi. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if, uh, if others also have the same uh, confusion, but um, um, uh, as an artist, I, I applied to uh, four uh, different proposals uh, on a ramp, but I cannot see a confirmation of the uh, of that I submitted it, and also uh, the uh, companies that I uh, proposed to, they didn't receive my proposal. So I'm very curious if this step uh, succeeded, uh, and if not, um, what's the status of my application? Uh, I understand. Uh, I'll try to answer this one, Antonio, if you want to add something. Uh, have you been in contact by email also with the, the companies that you send the, the Yeah, yeah. I contacted to? them by email as well, yeah. So the steps were, you are an artist, right? The steps mm -hmm. were that um, the manufacturing company sends you the invite. And once yeah. you accept the invite, you can start working together on the proposal. Yeah, did that you receive the invite for them, or? Yeah, yeah, I received their invites uh, and I submitted yeah. the proposal, uh, but they yes. cannot see my proposal, and they cannot see that artist even submitted a proposal, and I cannot see if the uh, what's the status of my proposal because now if I log in into Ramp, I don't see anything. I understand. I will have to check with uh, with the ramp administrators, with Panos. Maybe you've been in touch with him. I will contact him after this uh, webinar and uh, ask him to to reach out to you and see what happened if the um, if the response was uh, somewhere lost or maybe there is something that you you need to click in order to see it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. These kind of questions, I, I we highly recommend to use the help desk. But the help desk uh, through spaces. Uh, uh, Anka uh, showed you the, the 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 link to these uh, spaces because uh, you can we can receive all the questions there and and react immediately. Some of the questions, as uh, Anka has just said, require the intervention of all the people from the consortium of the from the better factory consortium. In this case, the the ramp. Uh, um, administrator so you know uh, it's the, the 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 space to to make these questions is is uh, the help desk and we are going to find the solution as as quick as possible okay thank you Gavar, for your intervention we have another question from ivana ivana when you can uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Hi. Yes, we can. Yes. Hi, thank you all for the presentation and uh, very valuable questions. Uh, some of my questions were already answered, but just one uh, clarifying uh, question in regard to forming the consortium. So if, for example, we have agreed um, with an artist and with an SME that we will be um, applying together for this project, do we need to sign a contract or to indicate to someone from the program that we are already forming a consortium, the three companies? I heard uh, Ali said that some companies already signed such contracts in RAMP. Uh, so can you uh, clarify a bit about that? Antonio, uh, would you like me to take this? Uh, well, I don't know. Well, let, let, let me uh, talk. Uh, maybe the the rank issue uh, we can discuss later. But in principle, uh, you know, we are not asking. And by the way, if it's not include something is not included in the guide for applicants, it's because we are not asking for that. So uh, I think the guide for applicants is uh, 
is very, very clear in what we are requesting uh, from uh, any, from the eligibility uh, standpoint, uh, everything we are going to ask. Uh, if not, it's in the frequently asked questions and all of that you can find it in the, in the website. But uh, to reply to your question, so the, the, the agreement you may have between uh, the different partners of the consortium uh, for the application, from the application standpoint, we are not going to ask any uh, agreement between yourselves. You know, it is, it is something out, completely out of the scope of, uh, of uh, our intention. In the application form, you are going to just uh, add the details of each one of the members of uh, the categories uh, involved. When you will sign, if you succeed, and you are one of the eight consortia that are selected, you will sign a subgrant agreement with the consortium, with the better factory uh, project consortium. Each one of the members, you know. So for us, this is uh, enough, sufficient to uh, understand that you, you agree that you will have to uh, provide this uh, the work you have been committed to do. Also, because as I said before, in the subgrant agreement, you are going to add uh, as an annex the individual mentoring plan. And the individual mentoring plan is going to be very clearly stated what uh, every uh, single partner of the of the of the, of the, the consortium of your consortium uh, has to do or uh, uh, yeah, what they, 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 they are committing to do. So if one of them uh, internally, because you don't have any contract or you don't you disagree at some point, it will affect the whole consortium. So it's better that maybe you sign a consortium agreement, an internal consortium agreement, but this is up to you. I mean, it's not something that we, uh, again, uh, during the application uh, that you need to uh, follow uh, both the online application form and the um, in the and the uh, full proposal template, we are not going to ask uh, to for you to to sign any uh, internal uh, consortium agreement. Is it recommended? Would I recommend it to do it? Yes, I would do it. But it's up to you. Regarding ramp, I no, no, uh, uh, Anka. If, if there is something uh, that is mandatory in ramp, uh, no, or... no, it is not. It is not mandatory through ramp. It's just that they they did find this channel to to do it through ramp. Some of the some of the preselected applicants who already formed the consortia, uh, they found this uh, possibility to do it through ramp. But it is not mandatory. Okay, thank you. It's clear now. Thank you, Ivana, for your question. Uh, let's take a question from uh, Jesus now. So, yes. Jesus? Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, the proposal refers to uh, technologies offered by Better Factory. So, where can we find these technologies? Is 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 there a catalog or something like that? Uh, I think it's in Ramp, but uh, where is it exactly? Thank you. Anka, uh, maybe you can answer this one. Yes, uh, the technology that we are referring to uh, that has should be included in the proposal or should be included in the um, implementation of the proposal. Uh, you you can find the details in the guide for applicants regarding uh, the technology we are referring to. As for the catalog uh, in RAMP, we don't, I don't believe we have uh, something like a catalog. We are always talking about the, the technologies in terms of RAMP and the apps. We do have a, a presentation. We had uh, 
I don't know if you participated in the presentation that we had on the technologies employed by Better Factory, and this will be available in the um, in the space in the space we have for uh, pre-selected applicants. Uh, however, do go to the guide for applicants, and uh, there you will find details on the technologies that we uh, we expect to be employed in the proposals. Also, the frequently asked questions uh, offer some insights on that, and um, the presentation I just uh, mentioned before, which you'll be able to find uh, as a file in the community in the spaces. You can see here the the address where you can access spaces and find this material. Actually, I, it would help a lot uh, to answer some of the questions if you could let us know if you have participated in the matchmaking process that is currently in process, or you are a completely uh, outsider and it's the first time you are um, accessing to, to, to this kind of information. Because something that we didn't uh, go through in detail in the presentation is that we are now in the last phase of the the proposal uh, of the open call which is the full proposal phase and in this phase a, a both uh, newcomers or, or outsiders having nothing to do with the project until now they can gather and and they can uh, combine uh, their uh, proposals with uh, three the, the the three partners requested but there are some other people that are right now uh, following a matchmaking process to precisely uh, make this combination between uh, or the matchmaking between these three uh, types of partners. For that, we had a previous uh, call, individual call, and so you, depending on, for example, in the last question, we don't know if uh, the person who was asking has been or is a part of of a pre-selected uh, applicant or not is a completely new one and depending on that we can uh, uh, understand better the question because in reality in the guide for applicants we are talking about prioritized sectors this is clear the guide for applicants and the presentation made by by Anka this is something that is very clear there are six uh, sectors that are prioritized we are talking about challenges that uh, Anka also explained and in the guide for applicants we are in something that we call uh, the ideal projects we are setting uh, different examples of uh, projects and technologies that we would like to to uh, have but it's true that during the matchmaking process there has been some other uh, information that has been uh, given by the technical partners to uh, the press selected applicants. So that's it. Okay, um, let's take a question from Manuela Ivanova, if she's still here. Manuela, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. We cannot hear you. Okay, uh, maybe we'll try later with Manuela. Uh, we also had some, um, someone, Suzanne, Suzanne Perner. Yeah, thank you. You can so address much. your question now. Okay, can thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Thank you so much, Anka. So thank you very much for um, for introducing this all thing and also for um, explaining how pragmatic you are being. It's explained in the FAQs with the lump sum approach and everything. Um, the hear me? people. Can you hear me? No. Yes, we can. I think we have uh, Manuela uh, also. Manuela, uh, I will mute you for a second and take some now? questions. Yes, we can hear you now, but we're already taking Suzanne's question. So just one second and we'll take yours Super. next, okay? Um, thank you so much. Okay. okay 
Thank you. Um, I actually have um, uh, three uh, quick questions. The first uh, one that I think might be most important for um, us, my consortium, is to what extent uh, is the manufacturer, can the manufacturer be a machine building company that is supplying equipment to the, ma to the furniture uh, manufacturer? Um, I did not find anything that is um, excluding this in uh, neither in the guide nor in the FAQs. So my question is the manufacturer is could the manufacturer be someone who's like um, building machines that are being um, used by furniture manufacturers as well? But you mean that uh, uh, sorry uh, good morning. Uh, do good you morning. mean that you have two manufacturers in the in the consortium? No, we would have one manufacturer, but the manufacturer would be manufacturing um, the machines that are being then um, used for the for the furniture building. Uh, let me try to understand. Uh, you you need to have a manufacturing company, okay? Yeah, yeah. This is the company you are talking about. Then there, there has to be a technology provider, so somebody yeah. that. Do you have this technology provider? Yes, we do. We do have an artist and a technology provider, and we do have a manufacturer, but in our value proposition, it is like someone, the manufacturer um, is, is, is going to be or might be going to be someone who's basically then um, providing um, the, the building of the furniture. So if you... Uh, if you, we're basically using the vertical, the vertical value chain. The problem is that, is that uh, I need to understand well the situation. I mean, this manufacturer is providing just the building, or is providing uh, is in the need of having an artist and. Uh, a collaboration with an artist and with a technology provider to improve the value chain, to improve the the, the cost production, to improve the the, the products they are uh, serving to the market. Yeah, it's like the letter. It's like we're talking about a manufacturer who's basically manufacturing original equipment, and the manufacturer, our manufacturer, is selling machines to the the furniture maker company. So it's basically um, the machine builder that we would include in the in the ramp, and um, they would be basically selling their machines uh, to all their furniture makers. And I think you had um, you had a, an example with a, um, with a, with a, some um, some uh, jet example in the in the last meeting. In the last, when you displayed the last um, slides, are, are you in the matchmaking process? First question. Because no, I... we have already formed a consortium. It's the, it's this this Finnish company. Um, you, are or on your like own. You, are, you are doing the, the the consortium on your own without the yes. help of better exactly. factors. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Here, I would say, okay, everything is possible. My only concern. And my only concern in terms that you might uh, apply, but then your uh, uh, proposal can be rejected because you know it's out of the scope, is that if the manufacturing company in this project is only selling a machine or selling a product, is not improving the, the value chain or, or the, their internal process to build the machines or whatever, I don't see, uh, you know, uh, that it, it, is, it is in the scope of what we are looking for. Because okay. so, yeah. if, you, if you saw the slide about the ramp, mm -hmm. in the center, then on the left you have the manufacturing SMEs that are buying products. They are not mm -hmm. selling products. The sellers mm -hmm. are the technology suppliers. Or another thing is that, okay, the technology supplier, in fact, is the selling company, the, the, the company that is selling, because the, the technology supplier can be uh, uh, an SME, but it has to be an SME. So, 
Now, the SME criterion is fulfilled, so that's for sure. It's just that because we are basically looking at um, going across the vertical value chain that we are thinking um, that might qualify. But as you rightly say, say it's probably also a matter of argumentation with the, within the production process and the criterion of lowering the cost and everything. Bear in mind, uh, I mean, maybe it's just a matter of how you are going to uh, draft your proposal. Bear, yeah. bear in mind that the, the, the evaluators are going to check if uh, you comply with the criteria that are established. So the manufacturing company, the, the company that you are saying, this is the manufacturing company. Yeah. It has to be a company that, of course, is a factory. They produce, yeah. they, they produce product, they have a, 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 a production chain and yeah. it has a need uh, of improving the process in terms of cost reduction, in terms of um, uh, new designs uh, of products. That's why they need a, an artist, no? Yeah. Mm. But in the end, you, we need to see that this company, this manufacturing company, is somehow just imagine that this a company, a traditional company that they, they don't use any kind of uh, technology, robots or whatever, that uh, allow them to reduce the cost, to reduce time, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is clear. Then the technology supplier is has to be a, a, com a company, uh, an SME, a mid-cap or whatever, mm -hmm. not a CEO, not a, a competence center, whatever, no, a company that has uh, a technology that has a technology that it is going to uh, pro they are going to provide this technology if it was not thanks to better factory they would sell the company that's why the, the the technology that's why in the ramp slide you see that the technology suppliers their interest in this project and further is to sell products you know mm -hmm. i have a product and mm -hmm. so one of my first customers can be these guys, so the, this manufacturing company. So mm -hmm. you need to have very clear in mind that the technology supplier is really somebody, uh, you know, uh, an entity that yeah. may be another manufacturing company, but is selling uh, a product, is selling a technology to the so-called manufacturing company in our product. Yeah, and that that would be fulfilled. That criterion would be fulfilled. The the example that I was referring to, and I just looked it up, is um, I think that is from a slide set on your website. The Muototere, this Finnish water jet cutting technology company, they did something similar to what we have in mind. So okay, so as long as it, it's so, thank you so much. I think that much. Um, I'm I'm reasonably uh, informed now. My my next quick question would be: um, I didn't find anything in your documentations about intellectual property, and it's just a question for us on uh, who is retaining the intellectual property in this uh, project. If they, um, especially like the tech supplier and the artist, if they have to give away that also to the uh, manufacturer, if you have any. Um, plan for that in mind or if they should then enter a pay-per-use um, contract or any licensing contract after the grant what is the experience from previous projects here okay first of all <clears throat> in the guide for applicants in section seven which uh -huh. is called last but not least final provision there is a mention to this uh, intellectual property aha uh -huh. i didn't sorry i didn't find that okay section you seven yeah. mm -hmm. that will remain your property okay the licensing of the uh, intellectual property uh, da, la, 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 uh, is, shall be agreed between the manufacturing SME and the artist of the manufacturing SME and the technology supplier. So, uh -huh, okay. Clear that the IPR belongs to you and it's up to you. You know that that that, that links to uh, one of the questions regarding this uh, internal consortium agreement. Yeah. And and I say we are not. You, you recommended. You recommended it. Yes. I recommended yeah. it. And one yes. of the reasons is this one that in That's a con general consortium yeah. agreement you can agree on who is uh, and how you know uh, and what kind of um, 
things you can share during the project, after the project, you know, if, if uh, there, you sell the product, uh, how much is getting, you know, the one who is providing the technology, etc. This is something that we are not going to uh, to be involved in, but okay. you, as a, the members of the consortium, and especially if you don't know each other, if you if, if, if you are independent, and you you know, I would recommend to have this internal Okay, there, and there, there is. There but... are some, sorry, to finalize. There are some projects, and uh, we as funding box, we are involved in many projects. But there are some projects where we are asking to have this internal consortium agreement. You know, yeah, it's mandatory. Yeah. To do that. But in this case, uh, maybe so far we are not asking for that. Uh, okay. The, the guide for Africa is not in the set. Now that we are receiving these kinds of questions that maybe are very interesting in terms of uh, clarifying also, because I understand your your concern as a, as a, as a, as a consortium, um, maybe in the, in the sub-grant agreement, we, uh, we might include a clause so that you uh, provide, you know, not uh, immediately, but uh, we can give you some time to provide a, an internal consortium agreement so that we make sure that you all agree on the terms and conditions of this collaboration. Because mm -hmm. what we wouldn't want is that you start a collaboration as friends, la la la, and then at some point, because it's 16 months, at some point there is a misunderstanding between all of you and you, uh, you know, we, we have a problem with that. We, with the consortium and we need to stop the experiment whatsoever. But th this is something that I'm talking uh, loud. Uh, I, I need to uh, discuss internally if, if maybe it, it would be recommended to, uh, to in this phase of the separate agreement, to, uh, to put that as, a, as a, something that we will request this uh, internal consortium agreement to understand how you are going to work, how you are going to uh, uh, distribute the, the, the funds or whatever, the, the, the funds, the potential mm -hmm. funds and the potential sales in the future, because in the end, what we pretend is that there is a business behind. And, uh, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Antonio. And the final question, which is more towards the technology, because you've been mentioning robots, and we were curious whether a CNC machine with um, three, four, or five axes would also be considered as a robot, or is it only uh, a machine with robotic arms, uh, six, seven, or eight arms, that you are considering a robot? What would be qualifying as a robot? You know what? Uh, I I cannot answer that question. It's, it's, okay. So, but that well, so that. But I yeah. recommend you to uh, uh, put this question in the help desk, in spaces. Yeah. yeah. And we are going to uh, uh, forward this question to the technical partners. Okay. Because Ali Ali, uh, who is the technical coordinator, has left. So yeah. it will, it will be more question for him. Okay, super, Antonio. Thank you ever so much. Um, over to the next person. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Manuela? Uh, this would be the last question because we are run out of time. We are ahead of the, of the schedule. So please, this, this would be the last question if you don't mind. Okay, let's, uh, let's try to take Manuela's question now. And uh, we have taken note of all the questions that you have uh, sent through the chat. And we will be answering uh, to those questions in the frequently asked questions or in the help desk. Manuela, can you hear us now? Can you? Uh, yes, I can hear you, but can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please let us know your question. Ah, okay, perfect. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, somebody uh, mentioned that uh, earlier with the same issue. Uh, we had uh, an invitation promising me that we would very much like to create a consortia and submit uh, uh, a proposal. Uh, the thing is that, uh, uh, I mean, it's not no longer a painting copper 
So it's accepted one, but the thing is that we don't know if the SME has been notified about that. I also try to email them and tell them that we have accepted uh, the invitation, but uh, I have uh, no response uh, from them. So, uh, and we have only one email and contact person who is in the RAM platform. So, um, I don't know how we should proceed to further. Right? Do you have uh, the phone number or something? Uh, I'm not sure if it's in the RAM. We have just one email and the person associated with that email. I don't know if it's the right person, but still it's the email that they've used for the RAM platform. Uh, and uh, they haven't responded. So, okay. Because... I mean, if they are no longer interested, is I mean, at least we should know about that. Yeah, uh, but but that... I'm not sure. Manuela, if, if yeah. they don't reply to you, why should they reply to us? Uh, I think uh, you got the the contact details and. Uh, of course, if they are not interested, if they are not responding, I, I would move to the, the next one. I mean, you have different, this is not the only uh, potential uh, partner you have. Or, yeah, or my question is more like, do they receive SMEs? Do they receive notifications uh, for that their invitation has been accepted? It's just, I don't know if they even know that we have accepted the proposal. Yeah, but I mean, uh, the first way, of course, is what you've done. You, you follow the, the, the process, uh, the procedure, very, very nice. But then if there is no response, then the second thing would be to send a, an email, a direct email. If they still do not respond to that email, if you don't have their phone number or whatever, maybe we could try to, to get that uh, uh, we will be in the same situation as you. If there are people not uh, responsive, what can we do? You know, uh, we, we, we have the same contact details as, as you have. We, uh, and we are getting this problem with uh, many people. We send them emails that they don't reply okay if they don't reply we can do anything we cannot be every day uh, chasing them up and in this case it would be as i say you have to try all the paths to get to these uh, people if they are not interested if they are not responsive then i believe that it should not be interesting for you and for you and for the project we are not interested actually in book in people who are not responsive, they have to be uh, motivated and, and, and replying and, and, and be proactive. Otherwise, imagine that you start working with them in the in the project, in the experiment, and they are uh, so uh, you know so bad responsive. It's going to be a nightmare. I would recommend you to find another partner. If you okay. follow all the, uh, all the all the all the all the all the paths and you don't get any response, but again, the only thing we could uh, from our side do is to try and get other, you know, contact details, their their phone number or whatever. Normally, if there is a company and they have a, a website, they should have a phone number in the website. But you know that this kinds of things is is also uh, depends on you. Not not we are not, <laughs> you know, uh, we 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 are here to help as much as possible. But there are some things that you know we are, we have the same the same uh, lack of uh, of uh, of um, responsiveness from people that you, that you can have. You know? I'm sorry, but don't think okay. that we have a special contact with them. No, we 
they don't have a special box. We are, they are not, we have no plenty of, of them. It's just, we have the contact details, we have passed the, the contact details onto you. They have, we have had, of course, uh, an application, they have been selected, they have replied, whatever. But if now you are trying to, uh, of course, if you only use RAM, it's true that they are maybe not notified because uh, RAM is not at this point, uh, to my understanding, sending notifications by email whatsoever. But the second thing I would do is to send an email and wait. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I think we can we can stop here because it's quarter to twelve, and uh, we should have uh, finalized at eleven thirty. I really thank all of you uh, for your attendance. Uh, you've made uh, very very interesting questions. Uh, I also thank Anka uh, for her very uh, good presentation and, and also when he was here. And just to remind you that this session is recorded, so if any of you uh, would like to get this, uh, I, I don't know, Anka, what is the plan? Are you going to send this, um, this recording to everyone or just uh, upon request? Uh, this uh, this the recording of this webinar will be available on our uh, on our channels. It will be available in our uh, help desk. I'm sure uh, that uh, Mobile World Capital will also share the link uh, on YouTube. So this is going to be a public presentation available to to anyone on the website of the project. They can also find it. We are not going to send it by email now, but they can find it on the project website, as I said, in the help desk and also on our YouTube channel. Okay, when we are talking about the health desk, just the final um, thing is the health desk in spaces. The, the, the health desk, you have uh, a link in the microsite uh, on the on the uh, up uh, of the of, of the website. You have a, a health desk button. You click there and you go to the spaces. Try to avoid sending us. Um, uh, questions to by email because it's uh, uh, I mean we consider this more interesting in spaces because all of all the people uh, have a view on those questions and you might have a question that is uh, where the answer is valid for all the people that is two spaces. Okay, thanks all of you and and good luck if you apply. Thank you, everyone. Uh, just one more mention, the questions that we haven't managed to, to reply will update. Uh, so please frequently check the frequently asked questions on the microsite and you can find your answers there's, there as well. If there are particular questions, as Antonio said, just address them in the help desk and we, you'll uh, receive uh, an individual answer. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great afternoon and uh, hope to see you, as many of you in the submission section. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.